So before you start screaming, oh no, not another video on a five gallon bucket uh, bee feeder. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's really not. So let's get started. Welcome back to the Garden Rebel channel and I'm Todd the Garden Rebel and today we're not going to the garden spot. We're going to talk about a question that comes up in many conversations in the vegetable and flower bed world every spring and it usually lasts on up until harvest time and that question is how to attract pollinators to your garden spot or to your flower bed it's a simple cheaply done project anybody can do it and if there are pollinators in your area this will attract them every time now we are close to the road today so you will have some background noise and just bear with me on this we'll get through it our first feeding system is this simple mason jar and we've taken a finish nail which is a small tiny nail almost about the size of a thumbtack and you can use a thumbtack if you need to and we've simply poked holes in the lid now if you've got a jar around the house you've probably got a few of these also so you can get by with this relatively pretty cheap make two or three of these guys you want to fill Half your jar up with sugar, the other half with water. Now I keep a bowl on hand and I simply use my jar and a sharpie. And wherever my sugar stops, I'll make a line. That's where my water stops. And I'll pour it in my mixing bowl. I'll heat the water up prior to doing that. And I'll mix it up. Make sure all of it is dissolved nicely. Put it back in the jar. Simply place the lid back on it, walk outside, you can get you two rocks, you can get you two sticks, let's just find us two rocks right here. Voila, bee feeder. Or you can get high highfalutin and get you an entrance feeder. These are like three or four bucks, you can order them online about anywhere, some hardware stores in your neighborhood may even already have these. You might have a friend that's a beekeeper, and we got these things laying around everywhere. Simple. If you've already got the jar in the band, four bucks. Without the jar in the band, nah, flea market jar, yard sale jar, an old mayonnaise jar with a hole poking lid, you're still looking at about three bucks. <laughs> a next idea for a feeder this is what they use on farms to water fowls that are usually in chicken coops and chicken pens. All right, simple, simple thing to do. It's about uh, probably five or six dollars. Some people don't like them because they say they deteriorate. Well, anything you leave out in the sun is going to deteriorate. Once the feeding season is over, for me here and the flows begin, I take these guys up, I clean them up, and I put them back into the storage building. And they're kind of messy to deal with, to be honest with you. Uh, same concept goes as with you, the mason jar. Half and half. Half sugar, half water. Mix it up. Set your water down like that. And your lid simply screws on there simple the problem with this is that I don't like these this way there's a hole right there and what I do is I'll place rocks in front of it and block that entrance where no bees can get in there now normally I take hardware cloth and I wrap around this where the bees will not drown. But you can take gravel, fill it up, you know, all the way around it, small rocks, whatever. As long as the bees have a place to land to drink, this is a great feeder to use, especially if you've got a medium sized garden. And you can also hang this one from a branch in your yard. Get it out of the way. Maybe it'll keep the ants away from it for a little bit longer. But uh, they're, they're all gonna find it eventually. However, under 10 bucks now this is one reason why i want to do this video today and you're saying to yourself 
Oh no, another five gallon bucket bee feeder video. Yeah, another five gallon bucket bee feeder video. But let me tell you the downside to this right here. Oh yeah, they're going to say it's cheap. And it is. I mean, it's five bucks for the bucket and the lid combo. I think the buckets are uh, two ninety seven, two dollars fifty cents, and the lid's like a buck fifty. That's fine. I don't have a problem with these as feeders. What I got a problem with is the lid ain't worth a flip after about two weeks. All right, if you're like I am and you say you go through as much feed as you do, here's what the problem is. Every time you pop this lid open, you're breaking that seal. And it just keeps getting loose and loose and loose and loose. Or you can smack it on there and it just don't have that bite no more. You don't, it leaks. So when you flip it over like that, and you've got your holes drilled in these little grooves, which I'll show you on the new bucket, you get sugar syrup coming out of the bottom and running on the ground. You're feeding nothing but ants. Now the bees will get down there and, and partake of it, but you, you know, the tabs are simply wore out. So, ours one is actually working. Ours one at work. Ugh. But they just, you know, it's aggravating to get this thing off. So, and you wind up, like I said, it, it starts leaking right around the seal. Well, I got a buddy that's a painter, and I was on his job the other day. <clears throat> I happened to come around the corner, and I seen this. Gamma seal lid. Now, if you're a homesteader, if you like prepping for food, uh, the big box stores usually sell food grade buckets for about $4 a piece. All right, this lid costs under $8. And this lid will last me for several years, I know. Uh, but typically, it fits a five gallon bucket and a three and a half gallon bucket. As long as the circumference is the same, this lid will fit. The good thing about this lid is it screws. There's no more popping and pulling. You're not wearing out your seal. The structure's on there. You can take a small rubber mallet or your hand and just pop it in there and it's good to go. Screw your lid on. Simple. Now sometimes it gets a little bit aggravating to get it loose. You know, because you got honeybees and you got everything like that. That's why I tell everybody, wait till nighttime, till dark. The bees go back to the hive. Have your sugar syrup mixed up. Simply go down there, flip it over, unscrew the top, pour your sugar syrup in, and readjust it. Now, the thing about these, if you're small, if you're uh, kind of not agile, and you've got, I never put five gallons in these things. I usually go about, uh, I think these are two and a half gallon buckets. So by the time the sugar dissolves, I've got usually around four gallon in here. And that usually gives me a little bit of flip room. And by what I mean with flip room is all the liquid isn't pouring down into the holes as I bring it over and sloshing everywhere. Now, most people will tell you, and I've already got my bucket marked, not to drill in this area right here. Well, I take it about a traffic. I take it a step farther. I don't drill from this point or this point that way or this way. Now, I'll put little dots where you know I need to drill. Just keep me on my bearing. The bad thing about this is you're going to have a lot of syrup get in this area that you don't have the holes in. I don't drill the holes real close to the bottom. So typically I rinse my buckets out every time I change my feed. Unless it's just like the next day. But if this bucket sits out there for three or four days and I haven't rebuilt it, I'm bringing it up to the house and I'm going to clean it. Okay. Now to finish this, the only thing you need is a small drill, small drill bit, and you're simply just going to go around drilling holes in between the flanges. But, 
I'm just not going to drill a hole. Well, I'm just not going to drill a hole in every section because that's one of the issues I run into is when I'm setting it over or I'm bringing it up. This is already filling up. By the time I get it like that, it's on the ground. So what I'm going to do is I've got a hole here, 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 here. I can take a small razor knife and I can simply cut some of this out about a quarter of an inch. We do that with a flat. I just cut some of the ribs out. I'll drill a hole here. I'll cut a rib out here and cut a rib out there and the liquid will just flow on either side of it. But the main thing is lid. This is the issue that I have with these feeders. And that issue has just now been solved for seven bucks and some change. And trust me, they're worth every, every penny of it. They really are. So, those are three ways to draw in pollinators to your area. Simple sugar syrup. A five or ten dollar bucket. And you are good to go. Just remember to watch out for these holes. Always make you a mark. Because you'll get in that drilling mode and you won't even realize it. And you done drilled in here and all your lift is running out where the handle is. Okay? But, one thing. Once you put these feeders out. And there's been a couple of days where you've not seen the pollinators you want to see. The only thing you're seeing is maybe yellow jackets or ants. That gives you one indication. Either you're living in an area that there's not a lot of pollinators and you're wasting time and only feeding ants and yellow jackets, or the flow is on and the honeybees have already found something that they're more attracted to. And that happens a lot. <coughs> so if you go with a few days, let's say three days, and you don't see a honeybee around here, I suggest pulling them up, washing them out, and storing them until a later time. Uh, get on beekeeping sites. They'll tell you when the dirt is. Usually July, August, the uh, middle of July, August, everything is done bloomed, and the bees are waiting on pretty much just weeds for the fall. But anyhow, that's the quickest way to draw pollinators to your garden spot. And they're all under $10. Every one of them. So, with that being said, I'm going to mix up some uh, sugar water. I've got some bees to feed. I'm going to use my new lid. And I'm going to get it done without getting it all over me. So, I'm the Garden Rebel. And I'd like to say, anytime you want to come back, you feel free to do so. If you want to leave us a comment, feel free to do that. We normally try to answer the comments as quickly as possible. But sometimes things happen, and it may take us a day or two to get back to you. Uh, so understand that we've got lives that we've got going on, and I just I don't get online a lot anymore in the evening times. I'm usually doing beekeeping or helping somebody out because fall's up here and it's hay season. So. Until next time, if you're not a subscriber, please feel free to do so. Uh, we enjoy all newcomers, and we enjoy all the feedback and a lot of the ideas. We've got a lot of projects coming up next year that a lot of the people had left comments about, our subs. And I am so happy you guys did it because it gave me some great ideas for videos next year. But until next time, I'm Todd, and we're out of here.